Hello, everybody. This is Elder Stacy Zanders. We're back again with another video. We're going to be looking at obesity percentage by race. But before we get into the video, let me just get this part out the way. If you're watching um, us on YouTube, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell uh, so that you can get all the latest updates on the videos that we make. If you're watching on Facebook, please, please follow my Facebook page, like and share the video if you're looking at this on twitter please uh follow my twitter page um like and retweet and on linkedin please like and share all of those things help the alg algorithms it pushes the content out to as many people as possible and please directly share it with someone who you think may best benefit from this we're going to be looking at obesity and percentage by race we all know we've all said it before that health is wealth but let me put just a little bit of scripture on this subject matter here I just want to let me just add this in here in third John verse number two, third John verse number two. Um, it says that John writes to Gaius. He says, beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health, even as your soul is well. That is the mod modern English version. Let me read that again, because health is wealth and we need to understand this. Beloved, I pray that all go well with you and that you may be in good health even as your soul is well. Now, I know we've always often used that scripture and we generally say that um, the scripture is often, often in, read in the King James Version, I, blah, I will that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. And we generally take that particular verse and apply that to prosperity. But that is not what the writer was talking about. Gaius was a sickly man. And first, I want you to understand that God, first of all, he's concerned about the health, the well-being and prosperity of your soul, not more so than your finances. So John, especially John, was not saying, I would that you would prosper and be rich and, 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 and all that kind of stuff. That's not what he was saying. He, the accurate interpretation of that scripture is, I will that you would prosper in health, even as you have prospered in your spirit. Gaius was a sick man, as I said before, and John was wishing him well in his health, okay? But we wanna look at this, and God, it is God's intent for us to be healthy, but this body is a temple, and we have to take care of the temple of this body in which we are inhabiting. We have to treat it well so we can get the most miles that we can, years of life out of our body. And this, I'm not just talking to you, I'm also talking to me. This is good information for every last one of us. And let me put in the plug for the census. We only can get this information is because there was data that was collected. Remember every 10 years, you have the census. I am saying to all black and brown, white, whoever you are, please participate in the census. A population could be underrepresented. I'm not saying that we are, but I do know that there is a lot of us who think that there's a conspiracy theory when it comes to taking the census, but this is how we gather all of this information, compile it. And also, if you don't take the census, then our community loses uh, vital federal funding uh, for your schools and different things of that nature. If you're undercounted, then there's less money those areas is gonna get from the federal government. Okay, well, let's look at the obesity. Okay, and it says, according to the CDC, a person is overweight if they have a BMI or body mass index of more than 25. Obesity begins, <clears throat> excuse me, with the person, if when a person has a BMI of 30 or more, the CDC considers obesity a serious chronic Ill disease. It increases one's risk of developing conditions such as high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, heart disease stroke, um, gallbladder disease and cancer of the breast, prostate, and colon. As we know that those um, diseases are in the rise, especially in our communities. But let's take a look at this by the percentage of obesity by sex and by race. Okay, we got over the age of 20 and over. We got men and then women. And um, black men and women, obesity, 37% of black men are obese compared to 55% of obese um, females. 
So this was number was a shocker to me. I would have thought that there were more men that would be obese than there would be women. But here in the category of African-American women have a bigger issue with obesity than with men. And I remember going into uh, my doctor's office once and, and she's a female doctor. And she said, one of the things that I'm concerned about when men come in and they have large bellies. She said, when you have large bellies, I'm already thinking in my mind, um, high blood pressure, type two diabetes and other sicknesses that is associated with that. And she said, likewise, when women come into my office uh, with big booties and hips that women, especially African-American women are so proud to have. She said, I'm thinking the same thing when it comes to women. Just because you have a large butt don't necessarily mean that you're in good health. Just because you have a, a large belly does not mean that you're in good health. She said, well, those are the first things we think about when we come in, come into our office is we look at those two factors there. So we have to do a little bit better. Let's compare that to the, um, in the Hispanic population. As you can already see that our graph is just about higher, but this was another shocker to me. That Hispanic men, 43%, this was a shock to me that there are more obese Hispanic men than there are African American men. These are the facts, these are the numbers. And Hispanic women have a 4% less obesity rate than African American um, women. So this one was a shocker to me. I thought this would be a lot lower because I really don't see a lot of obese um, Hispanics, not from my observation. Okay, and um, in white America, and white people in America, we have, they're about even with white men and white women at 38%. Uh, obesity rate, then again, um, you know, we are one percentage lower, basically the same between African American men and white men, and uh, but uh, white women are much, much smaller than the Hispanics and the African American women. And then, of course, I don't think none of us would be shocked to see these numbers here in the Asian category because their diets are a lot different from all of ours. That in the men, there's only 10 percent and then 15 percent obesity in Asians. I just don't recall seeing. I don't know. I don't recall seeing any Asian that I would consider to be obese or large to that standard. But I don't think this one in the Asian community would shock any of us to see that they their um, obesity rates would be low. And let's look at another graph here. It says African Americans have high <clears throat> incident rates of obesity. As a matter of fact, black women have the highest rates of obesity in America at 55%, um, or 54.8% of black women are obese. This number has been steadily on the increase despite the effort to bring awareness to healthy living. Unfortunately, black culture contributes to the increase partly due to the black diet, which consists of many fried and fatty foods. Another factor is mainstream America culture with its prevalence to fast, prepared, and processed foods. Chemicals are added to the fruits and vegetables to look, taste, and uh, longer shelf lives. As a report stated that the average tomato today has 50% of the nutrients of the average tomato in 1950. So we all know in black, we grew up, and I've talked about this in another video, that my doctor had also talked to me about, um, when, when we talk about things are hereditary, she said that's one of the biggest lies that they put out there in the medical community. She said, because what happens is with hereditary, just because your grandmother had high blood pressure, your mother had high blood pressure, don't mean you're gonna have high blood pressure. She said, they just try, they tell us that it's passed down through the blood, she said, no, it's really passed down through the food. She said, if your grandmother cooked with lard, ate pigs, feed pig ears, um, pickled eggs, pickled this, pickled that, fat this, fat back that, um, hog moths and pig's tails and all this other kind of stuff, if she ate that way, she has these conditions, she fed that to her daughter, which is your mother, and she has these conditions, and then your mother cooked the same way and they feed it to you, so you'll have these conditions. She said, but if you take an individual who refuses to eat like that and they eat healthy, guess what? They're not gonna have those issues. She says, so it's not necessarily that it's passed down um, through the blood is passed down through the food. Um, Netflix had a show on it called What the Health? And I mean, it talked about that. They had another show called um, Forks, I mean, uh, 
forks over knives. And um, if, if I don't know if they're still streaming, but if you can find those, please watch those videos. Because listen, the more we know, I've said, said it before, I'm going to keep saying it, ignorance is not bliss. Uh, you cannot keep um, screaming ignorance when you are uh, receiving the knowledge. So that cloak is now removed. But let's, let's look at black obesity rate by education. Because it typically say the poorer you are, the wor more, worse the condition that people are generally in. Poor people typically have more children. Not necessarily so, but they say because they have less to do, they occupy that time with other things. So they contribute a lot of things to poverty. But let's look at black obesity rate by education, men versus women, college graduate. 40% of men that are college graduate are obese up versus 52% of women. And could this possibly be because a lot of women are in white collar positions, jobs where they are like, if you have an office job, things of that nature, that where you're sitting down more, working in the office, working at a desk, there's less activity. Could that be a contributing factor to why women obesity rate may be a little higher, opposed to men who are more and have more blue collar jobs and um, trades as construction and maintenance and things like that, where they're walking and moving around more, that may be um, a contributing factor to why in this graph that black men obesity rate is lower. You know, could be. And some college, the obesity rate for people with some college, and men is 38%. It's a little lower than college graduates. Could that be because these individuals are the gar garbage collectors, the con construction workers, the mechanics, and um, things of that nature where they have more physical activity during the day? Possibility. And with some women, with some colleges, at 59%. And could some of this be that some of this um, obesity rate could be higher among women because some women that are stay at home moms, things of that nature also, where they're doing less physical activity during throughout the day. You have to, even if you're staying at home, you know, you got to make sure you engage yourself, keep your extracurricular ac exercise activities up. Okay. Well, high school or less, 36%. And could this be lower? I'm just throwing this out there. I'm not a meta, I'm not a healthcare professional. I'm just putting it out here. This stuff is for information and entertainment purposes only. Could it be because in high school you're doing um if, if you're working on a construction job, you're the one cleaning up the buildings and things of that nature where you may get a lot of physical activity? Could that be the reason why? And with less high school, 58%. So for women, it's, it has a tendency to stay higher, whether a college graduate, some, or high school or less. Um, but I think the activity level with men may be the reason why that's a little lower. And interestingly, note that the obesity rate for black women decreased with higher education uh, attainment. So what it says that, that that's still a little high, but they, they're saying with higher education, maybe because they have to stay more fit, to stay more competitive, but they're saying that with the higher education, the obesity rate goes down. According to the CDC, 58% of black men, I mean, black women with high school or less education are considered obese, um, opposite of 36% black men with a high school diploma or less were considered obese. But 40% of men with a bachelor's degree or higher are obese. Now let's look at child, children obesity, child obesity by percentage. Let's take a look at this. Look at this here. All right at children's obesity. This is the one that would have typically what would get us most of the time. And I know that little babies, when little babies come into the world and they have all those fat rolls, it's nothing more prettier or more beautiful than a baby with some fat rolls on them. We love that. But as those children get older, it becomes less attractive and we have to make sure that we protect the health of our children instead of giving them the things that they don't need as parents is our responsibility to make sure that we give them what they need but ch child obesity percentage by race and sex is from age 2 to 19 years old all right let's look at black boys have a 19 percent obesity rate should should this be this high should any black child any child period have an obesity rate of, of this magnitude. I don't think so. This These numbers should be lower, I think, across the board. Uh, but as parents, we typically will spoil our child children just a little bit more. 19% for uh, African-American boys and 25% for African-American girls. 
Then again, on this side too, uh, I have seen in my observation, a lot of um, Hispanic children that I would consider to be obese that were both boys and girls, okay? And it's 28%, um, 11% high, um, quite a bit um, higher than African-American boys by um, 10%, 9%. Uh, oh my goodness, am I, am I doing my math right? Yeah, it's 9% difference between uh, African-American boys and Hispanic boys, and just a percentage difference between um, um, African-American girls and Hispanic girls at 24%. And in the white community, there is a 15 to 14% obesity rate. Wow, um, this is a little shocking here that the numbers were really low in the Asian community here at 10 to 15 percent. They seem to be a little lackluster when it comes to their children by letting them children enjoy a little bit more uh, of the American way here to be 10, 12 and 10 percent in the Asian community. And among children ages two to 19 years old, Hispanic boys had the highest rates of obesity at 28 percent, while black girls had the um, highest rate among other girls, 25 percent. Asians have considerably lower obesity rates regardless of age under 15 percent. White children have obesity rates closer to Asian children, but white adult rates of obesity are closer to that of black and Hispanic adults. So there you have it. There you have the numbers. Uh, protect your health. We have to do that. And we can do that. It's discipline. It's um, adherence to diets, not overeating. Despite what we see, I know we live in a culture in America where uh, they tell you excess is better, um, but you're gonna pay for it in the long run. Our bodies are a machine. If we don't maintain the machines, those machines will break down. Here are the facts, here's are the numbers. Agree with it, don't agree with it. Men lie, women lie. These numbers and these statistics don't lie. And as always, I appreciate you all. I love you all. Until next time, God bless.